and mm -hmm. you are telling me that the software has a tool that allows us to find stocks when that news hits? Yes, that's right. So I went to under the font section, we have, you know, scan, screener, heat map, and then we have the calendar. And what the calendar is, it's a listing of all upcoming events, stock specific. So anything like a dividend, earnings, or something along those lines, or like a stock split, these all show up. So for example, let's just look here. One On the 18th of July, I see SPL and I have the number two. That means that there's a stock split that's going to occur on that date. And there are two, sh uh, two companies uh, whose stocks are going to go through that. So if I click here, we're going to see that it's Google. Now, Google has two types of shares. I'm not going to get into the definitions of this, but this is one. This is the other, right? So both of these are Alphabet, Google. They're both the same company. Their prices are slightly different because the different types of shares have uh, certain rights and privileges that others don't. But for the average person, you're probably going to spend more time on Google, G-O-O-G-L, rather than Goog. But anyway, so this is where we're at right now. So it's going to be a 20 for one, uh, which basically means that you're going to get 20 shares for every one. And this is making sense uh, because these companies' shares are so expensive. And in order for people to really actively trade them, you got to have a smaller price per share. Uh, so currently, Google still has the good fundamentals. We did mention this stock before. Still looks good. Still looks like a great opportunity. So I would definitely say, folks, keep an eye on these two. They should get much more active once they do the split. Uh, we have the um, this is where the split actually let me correct something. This right here is when the split actually would be processed. And this will be the first day that it should trade after the split. So on the 16th, it should be processed and done. And then on the 18th, it will start trading at a smaller share, but same stock, just a smaller uh, price per share. Now, we also have dividends, DIV. Dividends will be uh, when a company's uh, stock goes ex-dividend, meaning that the dividend is paid out uh, to everyone who's a shareholder of record for that time. And all a dividend is a profit distribution. So if you're interested in taking advantage of that, like there's certain stocks that usually are pretty attractive for this. Uh, Comcast, for example. Uh, Comcast is a cable company and it's very established. Uh, or a JP Morgan, which of course is a bank. Uh, Gap is a, uh, a clothing store. So you have different types of company dividends. Usually companies that pay dividends are so established that they can't really reinvest all the money they've got they're making because their their growth objectives they don't they can't grow but so much you know jp morgan is already very 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 big comcast is everywhere so it's kind of hard to to get into newer markets at a at a sharp pace like a newer company so what they usually do instead is they redistribute the income as dividends and then they reinvest some of it into you know further improvements in their company and processes etc um and then we also have EPS earnings per share. These are earnings. Uh, uh, these are earnings releases where the companies are going to release their earnings for the previous quarter to let everyone know how things are going. So we can always know exactly what companies are having earnings coming up. So we can see that uh, we have earnings really starting to kick in in July on the 12th. And then after that, we've got earnings coming out every day going all the way through the month, all the way up until the 29th, with a huge amount of earnings being released uh, towards the end of the month. Um, this is what we call, guys, earning season. All earning season means is it's a time of the year where you have a lot of earnings reports concentrated. And these are S&P 500, by the way, stocks that I'm looking at. I have it set right there. So it's only looking at companies in that, uh, that index. But if I go to switch it, I can go to all equities, I can go to all that are optionable. Let's say I have an option strategy that I use for dividends or earnings or something like that, or splits. I can go here and just look at optionable stocks. And notice these numbers increase dramatically because there are a lot more companies that are in that list. So now I've got 259 companies that are optionable that are having earnings on the 27th, which is a lot. Um, 
Now, the S&P, these are bigger indexes. Uh, this is a bigger index, so the companies in this uh, index are bigger. I can go to the NASDAQ 100, which will be the bigger companies in the NASDAQ and so forth. So I have the option of, of selecting all equities, which would mean that everything that's having earnings is going to show up here. But we can also be more selective. Now, this is a great feature because a lot of the calendars I've seen that show you upcoming earnings don't really give you a lot of ways to filter through them. This does. And notice that we also have our proprietary scoring system already visible. So that means that if I want to look for an S&P 500 company that's going into earnings this month and has a good score, I can just do that. I can just sort by the score and I can see, oh, okay, RJF or Raymond James looks good. It's going to sort in order, but either way, I'm looking at this and I can see which companies, like Humana, uh, Rollins, or I can look at companies that are not looking so great in earnings, maybe, uh, you know, on their score, maybe they have lower numbers. But either way, I can easily find something that fits what I'm looking for. I can sort by volume. I can sort by price. Just makes it very easy for me to find exactly what I want, what type of companies I'm interested in. And then I can find out, you know, if it's something that I want to try to take advantage of, if there's something happening in that earnings that are of interest to me, and then I can go from there. So, folks, this is a very, very easy way to find opportunities. And usually I'm looking at S&P 500. That's my primary. Or I'll sometimes look at the uh, S&P 100 or the NASDAQ uh, 100. But all of these uh, companies in S&P or NASDAQ 100, they're all optionable anyway. I do a lot of option strategies myself. And I can also look up ETFs. Now, ETFs are not going to give me uh, much in terms of uh, results because some ETFs pay dividends, but that's it. They don't have earnings. And usually uh, they don't have splits very often either, but they do occasionally. So I can look at any ETF that's paying a dividend. Some do. Um, a lot of people like dividend paying ETFs because they're a group of companies and they just take the dividends from all the companies in the group. Um, so sometimes these can be pretty nice ways to generate some extra income by holding those uh, positions through dividend and then getting out after.